Today I'm going to be applying my first ever ceramic coating. I'm going to show you the process I went through to apply Gion Mose to my daily driver Corolla. Now you might be asking yourself, Scrapper, why would you put a professional grade coating on a Corolla? And that's a good question. Honestly, this is the first ever ceramic coating that I'm applying, and I'd rather make any mistakes on my own car rather than someone else's. I won't be going into super detail in this video, as there are countless videos out there by much more qualified people than myself. But I'll show you the basics of what I went through to get the coating applied. I'll also show you a big mistake I made and how I could avoid it in the future. In my last video, I had a quote from the movie Star Trek, or one of the Star Trek movies actually, probably all of them. But it was first recognized by at Mac Rogers 3739. Let's see if you can recognize the quote from this week's movie. Now before I can apply any ceramic coating, I want to make this vehicle as clean as possible. I'm starting on the tires because, well, that's where I always start when I clean vehicles. Now you might say, well, you're not going to be putting ceramic on these tires. Yeah, you're right, but I always think finished tires make a vehicle look completely clean. Now I'm spraying some PNS bug off on the front of the vehicle to get all these stuck on bug guts removed. Then I'll cover the entire vehicle with some Adams Mega Foam to give that bug off some extra dwell time. I'll rinse this foam off the first covering anyway. Then I'll use my microfiber mitt to give it a soft contact wash, rinse that off. Then I'll give it an iron decontamination with a clay mitt, get everything removed from this vehicle so the paint is ready to accept that ceramic and it'll bond completely with the paint. With the paint completely clean and dry, I'm going to correct and polish it. First, I'm going to inspect it looking for the swirls. You can kind of see them here. One thing I learned is I really need better inspection lights. I look kind of foolish trying to use the lights that I did. Polishing is a step that you can skip, but the paint is probably going to lack some of the gloss that is hidden beneath the swirls and scratches. I'm going to try for a two-step correction today, but you could even do a one-step if your paint is in better condition than this. I'm not going for 100% correction though. I'm really just aiming for maybe a 60 to 70% correction on this car. The first step is to use some Jeskar correcting compound to cut out as many of the swirls and scratches from the vehicle as I can. I'm using my Griot's Garage 5 inch polisher with an orange cutting pad, foam pad from Griot's Garage as well. The second stage of the process is using some Sonax Perfect Finish to give that paint some that jewel, that glossy look. I'm using a five inch pad again. This one is a soft black pad that is the polishing pad from Griot's Garage. Now, you're gonna notice here, I probably used way too much of the perfect finish of the compound, of the polish, when I did this step. Again, this is fairly new for me. I'm not an expert, I guess you'd say, in the area of polishing paint, but I, I will say this turned out spectacular, much better than I thought it was going to. I know, I know, don't come at me for this horrible paint inspection light, but you can definitely see the difference between the polished side of the paint and the unpolished side. One spot I wanted to really make sure that I hit was underneath the door handles. When you reach in to open the door over time, you tend to scratch up that paint or that clear coat right behind the door handles. Now, I don't have a one inch polisher, so I couldn't use that to get behind it. So I just put some perfect finish and some correcting cream on a microfiber towel and was able to polish that. Then I used my 3-inch Gruitz Garage polisher to make sure I hit the window extensions. And I also hit the headlights because they had a little slight haze going on in those headlights. And the Toyota vehicles I've had, they're notorious for those headlights getting foggy over time or getting that haze build up. So I made sure to polish that off because I could apply this ceramic coating to protect it from getting that haze build up again. With the polishing complete, it's time for the star of the show, Gian Moe. You can see what I did there. You turn that bottle sideways, it does spell the word show. 
Now, everything you need comes in the box, this microfiber applicator. I think I made a mistake as I was using this product a little bit or one of the many mistakes that I made. I don't think I punctured the plastic drip top there. You can see it comes out quite a bit right now, but as the bottle starts to empty, it gets harder and harder to come out of the bottle. And yes, I know I'm probably putting on way too much product here on the first panel. The coating though goes on so much easier than I thought it was going to. I apply it in a crosshatch pattern and then let it flash and wipe it down with two microfiber cloths. I, like I said, I think I applied a little too much when I start because the instruction said this bottle should be able to cover a small car like this Corolla, not just one, but two coats. And I pretty much ran out by the end. Another thing that surprised me about the coating was just how strong the fumes from it were. I probably should have worn some breathing protection during the application. This coating just went on so well, and as I got further and further into it, it just looked so smooth and so much like glass. All I could say to myself was, This is beautiful! What is this, velvet? Like I said, the application process was super easy, but on this rear bumper, I did make a big mistake. Notice that I apply the coating to about three fourths of the panel, but when I wipe it down, I miss about a six inch wide patch right where my tripod is in the reflection. You'll see the slight haze as I zoom in with the camera. In the future, I know that I'm gonna need to have more light available when checking the wipe down step. Well, that was a long five hours, guys. Um, hot day out here. Probably my one complaint about this product, or I shouldn't say it's not a complaint, it's just uh, beware. When it's this hot, you probably don't want to be applying this for my first time doing a ceramic coating. It turned out really nice. Uh, you notice though, as I was doing it, that the product was kind of drying or flashing almost immediately. Uh, I should have been doing smaller patches. I got a little impatient and I was trying to get this thing done and I had some other stuff going on in the shop that was uh, taking my attention away. And I did dress the tires as well. It just makes it look so good. I did coat some of the trim, I said you could. I have all the products that I used in this video linked down in the description. Go and hit that, smash that like button. Uh, give me a comment down below. And I got a video on a couple on the left side of the screen here that uh, you might enjoy watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, keep it clean.